Alan Kay described him really as a Moses figure pointing to the, the promised land. And I think that's very much true. What's it like to see 30 years ahead of your time? And the answer in part is a tremendous challenge because no one can see what you're seeing. When Doug was 25, he was wondering what to do with his life. And after thinking for a long time, he decided to help the world solve urgent and complex problems. He realized that computers could help him achieve this, and as a result of that, he invented a mouse, windows, hypertext, and many more innovations that have changed the way we think, work, and communicate. I think you should ask him what chair he wants. Yes? You can just say we're ready whenever he's ready to. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what chair would you like to sit in? We thought we, it would be nice maybe to film outside there, before there is. Well, if I go outside. Early December 1950, I was driving to work one Monday and thinking rather deeply the thing I was thinking about was, gee, I had just gotten engaged the day before she had said yes. And so my head was full of all the great things that were going to be happening and family and everything and, and uh, exciting. But then I realized I was, you know, relatively close to my place of work and I'd better turn my attention to what my work should be. But something about the situation, uh, what it instead made me realize that I didn't have any, uh, really any basic long-term goals in my profession. The way you would use a computer in the 50s was by giving a stack of punched cards to an operator. Then you'd have to wait for a day. You'd never actually use the computer yourself. I'd read one book on them and I knew that they, uh, they printed out output printing. Being an electrical engineer and having worked with complex radar equipment in the Navy and during World War II, I just said all of a sudden, gee, if a, uh, if a radar set can put things on a screen flexibly, then the computer ought to be able to too. Engineering-wise, there's no real reason why you can't. And so uh, you could sit there working uh, interactively with the computer and on the screen. So, aha, uh -huh. so that's what I'll do is I'll go after trying to get computers working and so that they can be common because you can tie more than one workstation to a big computer I was sure and so you could start doing collective work. So that was my com new commitment and, and that's almost those very words all these years that's see it'll be 52 years in a, another couple of months. But that's what's just motivated me ever since, and I, I could never think of anything um, more appropriate or interesting or worthwhile. Making it real was never going to be easy. But in 1968, 17 years after setting himself his life's task, Doug gave what came to be known as the mother of all demos. This is where interactive computing was shown to the world for the very first time. Quite honestly, Doug was very difficult to work with during this period of time. Um, primarily because he wanted more than anybody could ever do. And he wanted all kinds of things implemented where there was no chance that we were going to make it. But we got through it. If in your office, you as an intellectual worker were supplied with a computer display 
backed up by a computer that was alive for you all day and was instantly responsive, instantly responsive to every action you had, how much value could you derive from that? So that's easier than going and typing it, see? Yeah. yeah so oh, wow, yeah. Well, this is one of the buildings that we uh, we designed the Mac in. There are there are uh, I don't know 20, 30 of us in this building, yeah. and we did most of our uh, software and hardware design, I think, in this building.